All right, guys, well, I've been making a list of things I need to finish. And honestly, what I'm finding out is I need to get all the fabricating done before we can finish off the, the good stuff, the wiring, the plumbing, all that stuff. So I got to build the carbon fiber upper sides that are going to go from here and uh, kind of keep the water out of the boat. So I have just a sheet of aluminum I brought in from outside sitting in here. It's nice and flat. There's a couple tiny little uh, scratches in it and those will show up, but I don't care. I'm not uh, too overly crazy about this. So here's the process. I'll line it out and then we'll get to work. So the very first thing is to prep this aluminum. You got to put a wax on here. So we're going to about to put two layers of wax uh, on, the, on here. And then we're going to put this release agent, which is, uh, it's not toxic, but it's uh, stinky stuff. It's a release agent that then lets that carbon fiber pop off of there. Then we're gonna put a two-part resin, saturate it. Then we're gonna put one layer of carbon fiber, more resin, another layer of carbon fiber, more resin, squeegee it all out. Then we're gonna put this green stuff hanging on there. It's called peel ply. We're gonna lay that on top of it and then you can really squeegee it and that leaves a texture on the carbon fiber that if you ever wanna go put more layers or Kevlar or anything else like that in it. It allows you to do that. So we're gonna do, like I said, two layers of carbon fiber, peel ply, squeegee the crap out of it. And that's gonna be the whole entire process. So I'm gonna get going on the waxing part. I'll just take you through it. I'll stop uh, in between and kind of talk a little bit about it. But that's what we're doing today is laying up the carbon fiber sides for the 907 race boat. Alright guys, well I just did the second coat of wax, gonna let it dry for a little bit, then I'm gonna buff it off one more time. But I thought I'd take a pause and talk a little bit about this process. This is what is called a wet layup. It's just like fiberglass. I'm not doing um, vacuum bagging, I'm not doing infusion, and I'm not doing an enclave. Um, so we'll talk really quick about that. So all wet layup is, is like I described the process, seal out the, re the resin, you put the cloth down, you put the resin in, make sure it's completely saturated, squeegee off all the excess, and then let it dry at room temperature. Um, an enclave, all the only thing that an enclave is, is an oven. It just raises the temperature and increases the cure time. So little thing about resin is to get it to dry slower, keep your temperatures cool. If you're doing a, a very complex layup, keep your garage open up your door, get some cold air in there because the cool temperatures will slow down that reaction time and give you longer time to work on it. If you if it's not curing right, crank up the temperature. Um, I've got these little space heaters. Sometimes I'll put a tarp over this thing used in my garage, put a tarp in here, put two space heaters in there. And man, I bet it's probably 110, 120 degrees in that little thing. I essentially make my own little enclave. So I'm going to let this thing sit for three days or for actually four days. I'm leaving on a trip tomorrow. So that's why I want to get it laid up today. Crank up the heat in here, seal up my garage the best I can and see if we can get a, a good cure and have a nice product by the time I get home. So this is a wet layup. So what about vacuum bagging it? All the vacuum bagging does or vacuum sealing does is it sucks all that excess resin out. So you're getting the optimum, optimal, optimum, optimal, ophthalmologist, no. You're getting the perfect combination of resin to um, cloth. And that equates a strong part. If you have too much resin in there, the part is gonna take on more of the characteristics of the resin. It's gonna be brittle. If you don't have enough, it's gonna be more like the cloth. It's gonna be floppy. There's nothing wrong with a wet layup and scraping off all the excess. It's also gonna weigh a little bit more. You're not getting all that resin out. So those are the kind of the pros and the cons of each. Um, infusion is when you do a complete dry layup, you vacuum bag it, and then you inject the resin in it and you don't waste any resin or anything like that. I have not done infusion, I vacuum bagged, and I've used my own little homemade enclave. Anyway, I'm going to get to uh, going on this, get this uh, done, put the release agent on that. That takes a little bit of time to dry, 
I'm going to read the directions again on the resin, on the mixing procedures and ratios for that, and we'll get this uh, thing laid out. All right, so this release agent, I normally just put it on with a brush, but I couldn't find a brush. So I'm gonna try to roll it on. I've never done this. I don't think it'll be that big of a deal. It's not all that critical anyway, unless the, the brush leaves uh, any kind of hairs or anything in it. But this stuff is, this is the little, it just creates a literally a microscopic barrier in between your plate, see that's leaving bubbles in it. Ugh. Maybe a squeegee would work better. Crap, nothing like being prepared. Dang it. Yeah, I'm just gonna squeegee it. It'll work better. Um, anyway, this just, this when this dries, it just leaves literally a microscopic film um, layer that is, that allows your part to break off of uh, your your mold. This is obviously it's not a it's not a molded fixture. All this is is flat sheet. So a glass makes another really good uh, material to lay up on because obviously it's perfectly smooth. There's no scratches. I have a couple small scratches in this sheet, but um, unless you're like doing car work and it's like finished where like you're getting judged and all that stuff. I don't care. This is a race boat. It's, uh, it gets abused. It's driven hard. It is trashed. All right guys, so the release film is all dried up. It's ready to roll. So it is go time for me. It's time to mix the resin, get this cloth down on here. I gotta wear a mask out here. It's pretty uh, bad fume, so I'm not gonna be talking anymore, but I'll talk you really quick through it. Then I'm gonna put on a time-lapse and you can watch what I'm going to be doing. So this is just a, a two part, uh, three to one, three to one ratio of that, mix it up pour it on here, put the squeegee on there. I've got my uh, carbon fiber cloth already all rolled out. Gonna do the two layers of it. Then I'm gonna put the peel ply on it, squeegee it all out and uh, let it dry and go on a trip and come back and uh, see how it looks on, what is tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. I'll should be back here Sunday to check on it. So I'm gonna put the time lapse on, enjoy. And here we go, get this stuff done. It's not fun. It's sticky it's dirty it's stinky but got to get it done and looking forward to the end result All right, I'll try to talk through my mask here and see if you can hear me. But one of the reasons you want to use this peel ply is I don't know if you, you could pick it up, but it really lets you get aggressive with the squeegee without damaging the car, the fibers. When you start to work it with the squeegee, the fibers are going to start to come loose on you on the edges. You can damage them in the middle. So when you put this peel ply on, it really lets you get aggressive with it and you can really get this thing nice and flat. This turned out pretty good. I'm pretty excited, should turn out nice. We will uh, peel it up on Sunday and that'll be a different video, but I just wanna show you how this thing works. Time to go to work, clean up, get out of this uh, stupid mask. This stuff is nasty, but we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.
Thank you.